Hello and welcome to the Candid Cash Flow Podcast, Episode 7. I'm your host, Ava Fails. This episode is sponsored by Thrive. If you are looking for a suite of tools to help you build your list and capture leads for a reasonable one-time fee, Thrive has it all. Build beautiful landing pages and opt-ins just like the pros, all hosted on your WordPress site. Get Thrive. All right, got a monster of an episode for you today. Hopefully my voice will hold out. I'm going to start off with a little housekeeping here. First up, in case you weren't aware, each episode of the Candid Cash Flow podcast is transcribed into an article and published to my blog. At the top of each post, you'll find a big blue button where you can download or read a PDF file of the show notes. If you heard something that interested you, all of the information and links will be available to you in that file. And I often include extra tidbits and bonuses in there as well, so be sure to check those out if the topic of discussion interests you. Next up, I'm now sending out a weekly newsletter that comes out each Wednesday, just like the podcast. Inside that newsletter, I send out three pieces of fresh content that I've created that week. That content may consist of blog posts, the podcast episode for that week, and links to books I've written, just to name a few things. I'm also sharing two, maybe more, pieces of content from my network. These are handpicked for you by me. If you have something to share, contact me, either via my website or in the comments somewhere hooked to some of my content and I will consider including your content in my next newsletter. Finally, I created a mini course over this past weekend that consists of a few videos and a couple PDFs on one of my favorite tools, IFTTT, If This Then That. There's a lot of different things you can do with that platform, but I specifically cover automating a good portion of your social media and building links to content like blog posts and YouTube videos. So I hope you'll consider subscribing to my newsletter. I'm giving out my absolute best stuff there and it's all free so far and there's just no other emails out out there like these. Okay, so on today's episode, what the heck is Steam It? Some of you probably saw the word cryptocurrency and were like, nope, that's okay, I don't blame you. Honestly, I understand very little about how it all works myself, but what I do understand is writing, and that's where Steemit.com comes in. Steemit is a blogging platform that's built on blockchain technology. My very elementary understanding of blockchain technology is this. The blockchain is like a chain of blocks. I said it was elementary. This chain of blocks fits together like puzzle pieces. The first block, or genesis block, is the beginning. Each block of data after that is added to the chain in chronological order. A number of systems can be built on the blockchain, like cryptocurrency transactions and Steemit, but governments are also adopting the technology to run their systems as well. Apparently, there's a strong and stable archiving element to this technology that makes it appropriate for those types of applications. I really don't understand it enough to know, as I've said. So let's move on to a tiny bit of Bitcoin back history. All of that being said, blockchain technology began alongside Bitcoin back in 2008. Even if you haven't heard of any of this other stuff, you've probably heard of Bitcoin because of its soaring value. Cryptocurrency values fluctuate constantly, more so than even precious metals, but Bitcoin has reached $20,000 
per coin in December of 2017. So if you happen to be someone who bought a few Bitcoin back in the day when they were just a few cents each, your profit margin margins are off the charts right now. Bitcoin has definitely made a few accidental mil millionaires for sure. So back to Steemit. As I said, Steemit is a blogging platform. I say it's like medium and red and mated and Steemit is their love child. Steemit is built on the Steem blockchain. That's Steem, S-T-E-E-M. Steem is a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin. When you create a post on Steemit, other users can upvote and downvote your content, which results in you earning Steem. You can then trade that Steam for other cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, or you can sell it for cash. There are a lot of people earning hundreds of dollars a day on Steemit. So now that we sort of know what Steemit is, let's get down to the nitty gritty. I learned about Steemit in the wake of their recent censorship on YouTube. Many creators were experiencing dramatic drops in revenue due to YouTube demonetizing their videos. And this had many looking for other ways to monetize their content. Enter Steemit. I created my Steemit account in June of 2017. The platform officially launched, launched nearly a year earlier in July of 2016. As far as blogging goes, Steemit feels a lot like Medium if you've ever used that platform. However, it has three different editors. It has a what you see is what you get editor, an HTML editor, and a markdown, which uh, when you type certain codes, displays text, images, and links in a specific way. Images and memes are pretty much required if you want to be seen at all on Steemit. Uh, in your profile, you are presented with five different areas navigated by the corresponding tabs. Those are number one, your feed, where you can find the content of other users that you follow. Number two, your blog, where you can find your own content and the content of others that you share or re-steam. Number three, is comments. And these are comments that you leave for others on their content. Four is replies, and those reply are replies from other users, both to your comments left on their content as well as on your own blog posts. And finally, number five is your wallet, and it's your Steam wallet where you can buy, sell, transfer, and view all of your transactions. A uh, wallet is pretty much a blanket term for the software that you use to hold your cryptocurrency. Uh, so that's pretty much an industry standard. The simplest thing you'll do on Steam Steemit is create content and then interact with the content created by others. Uh, luckily for sim simpletons like me, that's what brings home the bacon on Steemit. So uh, my experience as a content creator on Steemit has been kind of a mixed bag. Uh, everyone starts their time on Steemit with a traditional and somewhat obligatory introduction post. Uh, if you're interesting and creative, this could be the first significant earnings that you see on the platform. Uh, I think mine got like five views and earned only a few cents. And to this day, that post has only had 11 views. So I, I proceeded to try out different types of com content to see what performed the best. I wrote a couple of personal pieces that didn't do much. Uh, I wrote a historical piece on Amelia Earhart that didn't really uh, get much attention either. I posted poetry, nothing. For two months, I posted with little to no response. I commented and re-steamed others' content, and still not a lot happened for me on Steemit until I posted a long-form uh, tutorial complete with screenshots as a part one of a six-part series on how to self-publish books on a zero budget. Now you might recognize that title from my recent book that I put out and I'll talk about that more in just a minute. Two of the six parts earned more than $200 worth of steam which translated roughly to about $200 and some change in cash. Uh, the other half remained in my account as Steam Power, and we'll, we'll discuss Steam Power more in depth in just a few minutes. 
after that little bout of, it, of success and payment, I was hooked. Uh, I actually opened a second Steemit account where I wrote more personal and creative stuff. On my first account, I stuck to the tutorials and the how-to stuff. Uh, some of the, the writings, they did well, while others didn't do so well. Uh, all in all, I ended up with about $400 to take on my vacation in October of 2017. And I even ended up downsizing my WordPress catalog in, in favor of Steemit. After I got back from my vacation and started entering into the holiday season, I lost a bit of my momentum. Uh, I've since began pulling funds from that second Steemit account that I created and putting them into the original one so I can focus more there because that's where I have more followers. Uh, I want to cover the Steemit terminology a little bit. Uh, I mentioned Steam Power a minute ago. Steemit actually pays in three forms of Steam cryptocurrency. Uh, the first one is Steam, the cryptocurrency whose blockchain that Steemit runs on. The second one is SBD or Steam backed dollars. And it's a token that's tradable on and off of Steemit. So both of Steam and Steam backed dollars, you can trade for other cryptocurrencies or cash. Uh, the third one is Steam Power. And by default, 50% of your earnings is stored in your wallet as Steam Power. Steam Power is only for internal use. And to trade Steam Power outside of Steemit, you have to convert it first to Steam in a process called powering down. Now, you can only power down a small amount of your total Steam Power at a time, and each transaction takes seven days to complete. So, if you have, say, 200 Steam Power in your wallet, and you decide to power down, you're only going to get a small percentage of that, like between, I would say, between maybe 3 and 7%. And each transaction, each power down, takes a full 7 days to complete. So if you have a large amount of Steam Power in your wallet, it would probably take several weeks or even months to get the, get the full amount converted over to Steam so that you can trade it. Powering down is somewhat frowned upon by the community because the more steam power you have, the more your votes are worth. So by powering down, it's seen as a slight to the community since you're just decreasing the power or the value of your vote for personal monetary gain. Uh, there's more terminology, but it kind of overlaps in the other areas I want to discuss. So let's jump into that. Uh, let's discuss the pros and cons of Steemit. I'm going to start with the cons because I, you know, I'd like to end this on a positive note. So the cons. Unfortunately, Steemit has a caste system that is, well, as usual with caste systems, it sucks being at the bottom. Uh, wealthy Steemians, which is what the people of Steemit call themselves, are referred to as wells. Uh, the lower class are called minnows, and the middle class are referred to as dolphins. Some whales have accounts with well over a million dollars worth of steam in them, and these accounts usually belong to founding members and early adopters of the platform. But there are a few newer people that have managed to be wildly successful on the platform. Uh, if your content doesn't gain any traction, steam it is like a black hole. Uh, those six tutorials I mentioned earlier on self-publishing had less than 500 views combined after six months. So, you know, I feel like I could have posted that stuff on my own website and, and gotten ignored. You know what I mean? Uh, you cannot delete your Steemit posts. Once you post it, it's there forever. You're stuck with it. Uh, so be careful what you put out. Uh, you do not earn any more money on your content after the first seven days it's published. So it, Steam it is useless for passive income. So basically you write a new post uh, and it actively earns uh, from upvotes for a full seven days. Then you're paid out what the total of what it earned and then you can't earn any more after that. 
Uh, you also cannot edit the content after the payout. So the first seven days, you're able to edit your content. After that, you're stuck with it, however it is, whatever it says. And these few facts created several problems for me recently when I decided to turn those tutorials into eBooks so that I could earn on them further. Um, the plagiarism checker they use over at KDP or Kindle Direct Publishing found my Steemit articles. Uh, KDP requested uh, documentation from the content creator giving me the right to publish the content and they wanted that documentation to come from an email address on the domain where the content had been published. So that would have consisted of someone from Steemit using a Steemit email address writing to Kindle Direct Publishing saying that was my content. Fortunately, they accepted my acknowledgement as the author of the, the content on Steemit and approved my book for publishing. Otherwise, I would have been stuck with that content there on Steemit and no other way to earn from it any further. As a result of all that, I've decided against posting any more long form content on Steemit that I intend to use elsewhere. Uh, by providing no means to earn passively, Steemit hasn't earned the right to hold exclusive content, in my opinion, even though the community demands it. Uh, there's a lot of drama on Steemit, especially here lately. With its increase in popularity, there are more than 500,000 accounts. With that increase in users, inevitably comes an increase in crappy people. Anyone found abusing the reward pool with crap content for personal gain is virtually put in stocks in the town square and stripped of their reputation as well as a portion of their rewards. Dolphins and minnows alike can be found complaining about the whales' complacency regarding such abuse because whales have such a heavy voting power, they are expected to police the abusers. It's rather medieval, and honestly, I hate that part of Steemit, and I really think that's going to be what eventually makes or breaks the platform as time goes on. On to the pros. The bright side is that you can easily avoid all that drama by simply avoiding it. You can follow and interact with the people you like and steer clear of the rest. The community on Steemit, for the most part, is stellar. There's no other group like it online that I've been a part of, and I've done everything from forums to instant messaging to Facebook groups. Everyone there is helpful and kind because being nasty does not pay. Steemit is pretty much self-policed. There are a few teams of people like Steam Cleaners and Spaminators who keep things in line with the help of bots like Cheetah who will call you out if you plagiarize. Uh, because Steemit is a blogging platform, there's a lot of great stuff to read. When you interact with content from others, you can earn as well. So if you're not much of a writer, you can still make money on Steemit, uh, voting and re-steaming the content of others and that is referred to as curating. There's no mobile app currently available for Steemit that does everything, but eSteam is a promising up-and-comer if you want to try it out and see what that's like. All right, let's move on to some tips. I'm running a bit long here on time and words, and I want to be sure I squeeze some tips in here for you. So I've got 10 tips for new Steemians. Number one, Steemit isn't reciprocal like Twitter. So don't follow people just because they followed you. Uh, that will make for a very poor reading experience for you on Steemit. Number two, there are several communities available to help you learn the ropes on Steemit, like the Minnow Support Network, and you might find those helpful. Number three, Crypto news about Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, those seem to be the type of content that get the most attention. Uh, you'll need a unique and well-informed approach if you choose to go that route with your content. Number four, read all of the FAQ info provided to you by the CMIT community. You'll find that in a hamburger menu in the top right corner uh, of your dashboard. Number five, Upvoting your own content is kind of a controversial thing. Many users on every level swear by it, while others frown upon it. 
Self-voting can give a new post a boost out of that black hole oblivion I talked about earlier, but I've never had a lot of luck with it. Number six, categorize your blog posts accordingly. The first tag is the main category of your blog. You can select four more after that. You can see a list of trending tags visible on your feed, as well as the trending, new, hot, and promoted pages. You do not want to use trending tags just to boost your post unless they are actually relevant to your topic. There's a bot for that too, and these bots, what they do is they call you out in a comment on the offending post or comment if you're commenting on someone else's content and let everyone know that it's, you know, plagiarized and it's embarrassing and it's there forever. Number seven, read and engage with others' content. The highest compliment is to re-steam their content to your own blog. So you definitely want to engage with others on the platform. That's how you build your following. Number eight, you can share pretty much any kind of content you like. Uh, be sure you check out the other decentralized, uncensored blockchain services like DTube, DSound, and Zapple. Those are like the YouTube, SoundCloud, and Twitter of the block of the Steam blockchain, and all three of those post to your Steam it blog automatically when you post content to them. Number nine, don't expect a miracle. Like I said, it was two months before I saw any significant revenue. Uh, in my tenure, I've seen Steam it fluctuate in value from well under a dollar all the way up to seven dollars. Uh, just last week, I traded 10 Steamback dollars for $99 and some change, and I was stoked about that. Number 10, have fun with it and experiment. Your only investment is time unless you choose to do more. This has been a massive amount of information. If you're overwhelmed, I'm available to you in the comments below. Uh, in the show notes for this episode, click that big blue button on the corresponding blog post. There'll be a link in the description. Uh, I've included the following bonuses for you. I have a short list of my favorite Steamians for you to check out. I have a tutorial on how to turn your Steam and SBD into cash. I'm also throwing in how to keep your Steam image game on point how to back up your content, a list of other sites like Steemit, paying in cryptocurrencies, and a list of third-party services to enhance your Steemit experience. You're going to want that PDF. It's always a pleasure to spend time with you. Thanks for being here. I hope you will consider subscribing to the Candid Cash Flow podcast if you haven't already. You can find links and subscribe to it on all your favorite apps at heyoeva.com slash candidcashflow. If you have, thank you. I'm humbled. If you want that newsletter I was talking about, don't forget to fill out the simple form on my website. It's right over in the right sidebar on every page. And I'll send out that free course on IFTTT to you immediately. Until next time, turning your passion into cash flow. Thank you.